look like the cartels have a new target here in America. And this is 100% the fault of politicians for opening the floodgates. Of course, the cartel are going to come in here. Why shouldn't they? You are letting everybody across the border unvetted. So, of course, them and your worst criminal elements, of course, they're going to come across that border. And as it stands, the way y'all move, they really don't have to worry about being deported. Because y'all literally are deporting practically no one. So let's get into it, y'all. Mexican drug cartels are targeting America's reservations. So the cartel associated with drugs, fentanyl, and meth, they are in Montana on the Indian reservations. So on the evening of March 17th, 2020, a former Mexican police officer working for a cartel left his hotel room in Tijuana and walked across the U.S. border into Southern California. And he was stopped in San Diego at the International Airport where he picked up a rental car and drove to a location where he met a female drug mule, handed off a grocery sack with methamphetamines. Then he set out on a much longer journey, a 16 hour drive to Montana. And his name, he said, is Ricardo Ramos Medina. And you know how some these folks don't give real names, probably isn't even his real name. So Medina made the trip a handful of times before, but this time it didn't go as planned before he reached Butte. He was pulled over by state and federal officers inside of his white Jeep compass. They found two pounds of pure methamphetamines. And they said it was enough to supply the entire town of Townsend. You know how they always describe the drugs. Oh, it's enough for everybody in the state and all that, that stuff they love saying. So there was an arrest. And according to court papers and an interview with investigators on the case, it helped bring down a drug trafficking ring. The federal prosecutor said at least 2,000 pounds of meth and 700,000 fentanyl lace pills were in Montana that came from Mexico over three years. Why Montana? Well, Montana Division of Criminal Investigation agent, who was one of the lead investigators, says it boils down to money. He could make so much more profit if they sold in these sort of places. So illegal drugs have long flowed from Mexico. Yeah, and all over the country. I mean, we're talking Montana today, but those drugs ultimately end up everywhere. So they have been pushing more aggressively in Montana lately where the pills can be sold for 20 times the price that they get in urban centers close to the border. This is according to federal and state law enforcement officials. Some areas of the state have become awash with drugs, particularly in Indian reservations, where tribal leaders say crime and overdoses are surging. And you know what it is. In fact, when I was doing a lot of videos on opioids, the Indian reservations came up a few times and how they were struggling with the opioid addiction. Some reservations, cartel associates have formed relationships with indigenous women as a way of establishing themselves within communities to sell drugs. So they don't really care about these women. They're just trying to get in there and sell the drugs. Law enforcement officials and tribal leaders said 
More frequently, traffickers lure Native Americans into becoming dealers by giving away an initial supply of drugs and turning them into addicts, indebted to the cartels. Right now, it's fentanyl raining on our reservation. So this is Marvin Weatherwax Jr., who serves, uh, he's on a Blackfeet Tribal Business Council and represents the 15th District in Montana House of Representative. Cracking down on the drug trade is especially challenging in a state as vast as Montana, where law enforcement struggles to police the wide open spaces and in Indian reservations. So this is according to what he is saying. So at least one reservation tribe members form a vigilante group in a desperate bid to fight drug related crimes. So Montana authorities have made inroads in the last couple of years. The arrest of a former Mexican police officer was part of a massive bus to ensnare 21 other members of a drug trafficking ring tied to um, cartels. So, wow. And since last April, 26 suspects have been charged in a second federal drug case involving Mexican cartels. So, I mean, look, it must have been in the summer, there was a man and he came on video and he was showing, he said he lived in the mountains of Arizona. And he said the drug cartels have pretty much taken over the mountain regions. And he said he's recorded the activity. He sees it, you know, he says it's not like they're trying to hide and they're not doing anything about it. And from what he was saying, the authorities are fully aware they are in those mountains. But like I said, when it comes down to ICE, Homeland Security, and just Biden administration in general, it, it's almost like they don't want to arrest anybody over here, regardless to what crime is being committed, because that sure seems to be the case. All right, <clears throat> people are surprised. This is what the U.S. attorney from Montana, who was overseeing the investigation. So his name is Jesse Laslovich. You're as far north as you can get in the United States, yet we have the cartel here. Yeah. You know, and many of them are saying once they're in there, it's hard to get rid of them. It's hard to get them out. So <clears throat> Stacy Zen spent the first four years with the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, in El Paso, where she investigated Mexican cartels. She went on to work in Afghanistan and Peru pursuing these traffickers. So in 2014, the DEA transferred her to Montana and she was later uh, placed in a charge of, in charge of the offices in Billings, Great Falls, and Missoula. She says she was promoted and you're going to Montana. I'm like, Montana? Are there drugs in Montana? And they, yeah, apparently lots of it. The state sometimes refer to the place as the last best place in America. It's 1.2 million people are spread out across 150,000 square miles of mountain rivers and rugged terrain. Locally made methamphetamines was long Montana's primary drug scourge. And they said that occurred from the mid 2000s. 
once plentiful meth houses in Midwest and Northern states began to disappear and new restrictions banning access to the drug precursor chemicals. Well, you know what they said, what they made in the U.S. in those meth houses really was not as good a quality of what the Mexicans made. And that was another reason why it fizzled out. And plus, they said the cost, it was real cheap to buy on top of that. So, you know, they are acknowledging that they are flooding Montana, especially the Indian reservations, with super potent meth and targeting indigenous communities. You know, and I was watching the video and it was like, you know, they said at night it becomes a whole different place because that's where the activity really ramps up at night. So y'all, I mean, it's deep, but the way they got these borders thrown open, it's not shocking that this is the case. You know, uh, you can thank your politicians for being so lackadaisical about who comes in here. And, you know, it's like what you hear from a lot of people, they're saying, you know, they feel like they're deliberately destroying this place. And they are, you know, I mean, think about it. If the place collapse, it's not like it's going to impact these multi-millionaire politicians up in here. They're going to be able to go home and be unaffected by everything. And the people that got to live around this particular situation, they're the ones that will pay the price. You're going to have to tell me what you think about this one, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.